Okay, so the formula is IQ is equal to 1 plus I to the M to the power of M over Q minus 1 where the IQ is the effective interest rate that you want to find, so the equivalent effective interest rate, where Q is the compounding that you want to convert it to, compounding periods you want to convert it to. IM is the one that already came in, so it's the compounding periods that it was already written as, and you need the effective interest rate for it. So it was given to you nominal, you would have to still convert it to effective. So it's the... Effective interest, again, the one that you have, where M is the compounding periods of the one that you have. And then you have your Q, and the Q is the one that you want to convert it into. So if you're taking it from months to quarters, then the Q would be 4. So the example we have here is we have 2,000 Rand is invested at 11% per annum compounded daily. And it's just for one year, but the year and the times don't really matter to us. What is the monthly effective interest rate? So once again, 11% per annum compounded daily, and we want to convert it to monthly. So the moment you see that and you see you want to have a conversion happening there and it's to do with compounding periods, and it's the interest rates that you want to convert, you would use IQ is equal to 1 plus IM m divided by q minus 1. So that's the formula you know you're heading for. What do we have? So we have i365. Well, we're going to have it. Because we have the j written as 11% per annum compounded daily. So that's a quick conversion we can make because remember i365 is just your normal interest rate divided by 365. And it's your normal interest rate in decimal fraction notation, so it's 0 0.11 divided by 365. So we have our M, it's 365, and we want to convert it to monthly. So we have our Q is equal to 12. So let's go ahead and just write that down. We have I12 is equal to 1 plus I 365, 365 divided by 12, minus 1. And now we can sub in what we know. So it's 1 plus 0 0.11, 365, 365 divided by 12, minus 1. And now we can just solve this on our calculator. And that is going to give us 0 0.0092074, etc. Which, when we are now going to look at it in percentage, we just multiply that by 100. And if we multiply that by 100, that is 0.92% monthly effective. And we round off to two decimal places there because in this module, two decimal places is just fine for the finance and stuff. Just a reminder that when you get it in your formula, it's in decimal fraction notation. So it comes out in your formula as 0.0092. But when you're talking about it, when you're having discussions, you would automatically convert it to percentage, just multiplied by 100 with the 0.92 monthly effective. And one further reminder, remember, the moment you see like compounding daily and you want to look at it in compounding monthly, you're going to use this formula. IQ is equal to 1 plus IM, M over Q minus 1. So we have another example that says, if the quarterly effective interest rate is 2%, what is the nominal per annum rate with monthly compounding? So again, this is giving us a hint that we want to use the equivalent effective interest rate formula because we have quarterly effective interest and we're looking to change it to monthly compounding. So that again is a glaring sign of the formula that we need to use. So let's write down the formula again. It's IQ is equal to 1 plus IM, M over Q minus 1. Now what all do we have? So we have 2% quarterly 
effective. So this is already a, an effective interest. So we already have I4 is equal to 0 0.02. Why 0 0.02? Because it's 2% divided by 100 to write it in our formula. So remember decimal fraction notation. So it gave it to us as an effective interest rate there. Then it asks us for the nominal interest rate. So it's asking us actually for J if compounding was monthly, which means we first need to find out what I12 is before we can go back and get the nominal interest rate for it. So to find I12, we're going to use the formula that we wrote down. So we have I12 is equal to 1 plus I4, 4 over 12 minus 1. And now we can just substitute everything into there. So you have 1 plus 0 0.02, 4 divided by 12 minus 1. And we can put that into our calculator. And that's going to give us 0 0.006622, etc. But remember, you want to get the nominal interest rate. So we will have J is equal to I12 times 12. Because remember, J is equal to IM times M. And that is going to give us, so we times in about 12, 0 0.0794, etc. And once again, when we're doing this, we, when we're talking about it, we want it in percentage. So let's just multiply it by 100. And that's going to be 7.95% per annum compounded monthly. And we just rounded it off to two decimal places here. So here we had to first convert it to the equivalent effective interest rate, and then we took that equivalent effective interest rate and converted it to a nominal interest rate to get the nominal interest rate that we were looking for. Okay, so we have an example which is institution A's lending rate is 11% per annum compounded daily, and institution B's lending rate is 15% per annum compounded monthly, and it says at what institution should you take out a loan? Motivate using the equivalent affected interest rate. So we, there is numerous ways that you can actually go about solving this, but it tells us to use equivalent effective interest rates. So we're going to do that. Now, for equivalent effective interest rates, your formula is IQ is equal to 1 plus IM, M over Q minus 1. So that's the formula we'll use. And we'll use this formula because both of them are like compounded daily and compounded monthly. There is no continuous compounding. Remember, when there's continuous compounding, this formula changes. Okay, so that's the formula we're going to use. Now, there's going to be a few ways we can go about this because it doesn't tell you exactly which one it wants you to convert and so on. So I'm going to actually run through a couple of the ways. So you can see the differences and see the different approaches. So my first approach, and I'm going to draw a line there like that, is I'm going to take institution A, which is going to need the I365 of it, and I'm going to convert this to I12 because institution B is compounded monthly. Okay. Then I'm going to take this I12 and convert it to the nominal interest rate of percentage per annum compounded monthly so that I can make a direct comparison with the listed price for institution B, which is 15% per annum compounded monthly. So the idea is to take the nominal interest rate, the original nominal interest rate, which is J is equal to 11%, per annum compounded daily, convert it to its effective interest rate, convert that effective interest rate into the equivalent effective interest rate compounded monthly, because that's the compound that B is in, and then convert it to the nominal interest rate representing that compounding monthly, because then we can directly compare it to the nominal interest rate there. It seems a bit confusing at first, and I understand that, that it is going to be a bit of a challenge at first to go through it and see the process, but that's what we're going to do. So step one, we take institution A's nominal interest. So J is equal to 11% per annum 
compounded daily. And we say, okay, well, that in all our formulas, we need the effective interest rate. Because remember, when we work with formulas, it's the effective interest rate. So that's 0.11 divided by 365. Where did that come from? Remember, IM is equal to J divided by M. And now we're going to convert it to I12. So we're going to need the formula, which is, again, we've written this down already. IQ is equal to 1 plus IM, M divided by Q minus 1. So we have I12 is equal to 1 plus I365 divided by 365 divided by 12 minus 1. Now we can sub in everything that we know. So that's just the I365 that we know. So it's 0 0.11365, 365 divided by 12 minus 1. Again, if you're a bit lost wondering where that comes from, it comes from over here where we made the conversion. And now we just put it into our calculator. And we're going to get 0 0.00920, 0, et cetera. We don't round off now. So remember, we only do the rounding off right at the end. So our next step is we're going to take this I-12 and write it as a nominal interest rate, which is per month. So compounding per month. In other words, per annum compounded monthly. How do we do that? So once again, we have the formula that J, and I'm using the wrong pen, hold on a second. J is equal to IM times M. So that's I12 times 12. Why the 12? Because we converted it to 12 because we want our normal interest rate to be represented in compounding monthly to match the institution B's compounding. And now we just put in our values. So that's 0 0.090, 0, 92, etc. Remember that's still in your calculator. You're going to multiply it by 12 and you're going to get equal to 0 0.110488, etc. But we do want a percentage so we can make a direct comparison. So we're just going to multiply it by 100. And at this moment, so we can now say, J is equal to 11.05% per annum compounded monthly. Bearing in mind that your actual answer was 11.04889861, etc. But we round off to two decimal places in this module. So, you know, around it off, it's 11.05% per annum compounded monthly. And now we can make, you know, a comparison between the 15% of institution B directly. So remember B's was 15% per annum compounded monthly. And now the fact that they have the same per annum compounding means we can just directly compare the percentages and be like, okay, well, we want the one that's lowest because we've taken our loan. So we say, okay, institution A is the one that we want. Right. Next, we're going to try just a slightly different way. So here we converted the I-12 to the normal interest rate to make a comparison. We could have converted institution B's normal interest rate just to its effective interest rate and make the comparison. So let's do that. So we're doing pretty much the exact same thing up until we get I-12, but then we take B the 15% per annum compounded monthly, and we convert that to an I-12 as well. So that is just 0 0.15 divided by 12. So 0 0.15 divided by 12, that gives us 0 0.0125. Now, once again, we can compare things directly. So we have, this is B's, and we had A's, I-12, is equal to 0 0.0092, etc. And here again, you can just be, well, we can take the lowest one and we see that institution A is the one we want. So there's a couple ways we can go about this, particularly if we aren't told which ones to do.
We could also have converted B to I-365. So we could have taken B, which is an I-12 of 0 0.15 divided by 12, and converted it to I-365, and then converted it to a normal interest rate, which is percentage per annum compounded daily to make the direct comparison with what was presented to us for institution A. And if we went ahead and did that, we would have had I-365 is equal to 1 plus I-12, 12 divided by 365 minus 1. Remember, it's M over M divided by the Q. And then we would just put this into our calculator. And we would get 0 0.00408, etc. And now we could do make the comparison with the effective interest rate we worked out for institution A, which is just that 0 0.11 divided by your 365, which is 0 0.003. So we would have already had the I365 of A, which is 0 0.11 divided by 365, which is equal to 0 0.003, etc. And once again, we can see that institution A's percentage is lower. So again, there's a bunch of ways we can do this example because they weren't very specific on exactly the method they wanted you to do. The idea was just to use your equivalent effective interest rates to compare, and that's what we did.